Well, if you're a parent or a grandparent out there, a coach, an educator, someone who's worked with kids before, you've probably thought about the question, what the kids really need. Hey, everybody. Welcome to SJC's online worship experience. It's the Generation Sunday edition. If you're new, if it's your first time, we want to welcome you. You're in the right spot. We're going to have a powerful time of prayer, worship, time in God's Word. We're going to be exploring the answer to that question, what every kid needs. And the answer may be surprising. It's an orange life. So stay tuned as we unpack and explore what we mean by that. Let's get ready to do it, everybody. You call me from the grave by name. You call me out of all my shame. I see the old as past At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. 
If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased in that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I see many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. And you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. So undeniable, I can hardly speak peace. So unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Still into love, 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 love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. 
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who I am. 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 You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 Welcome everybody to Generation Sunday at SJC. It's an annual celebration of the rising generation and our call to share the love of Christ with our children, youth, and students. You know, there's no better investment and no greater work that we could ever give ourselves to than to pour God's love into the heart of kids. And today we want to reflect on the importance of being orange for the sake of our kids, our grandkids, for our neighbors, and for the kids uh, of our entire community. See, being orange is all about partnership. It's all about two very powerful influences, the church and the family, leveraged together for the glory of God, which is the ancient, um, or the pattern, I should say, of ancient Israel uh, and the New Testament church that we read about in Scripture. Partnership is God's design. Humanity as the image of God is actually the core expression and reality of that partnership. For instance, Psalm 78 is one of our favorite anthems when it comes to nurturing uh, the faith of our children. Verse 3 and 4 says, The things that we have known and heard that our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children, but we will tell the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and of His might and the wonders that He has done. Close quote. Stretching back to Israel's wilderness journey, we read Moses' exhortation to covenant families uh, regarding how they should be sharing their faith in the Lord with their children. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 is a classic example of this. Verses 7 through 9 say, You shall teach them the commandments of God diligently to your children, and you shall talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hands, and they shall be as frontlets between your very eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, close quote. Our practice of infant baptism takes its cue from this pattern set out in Scripture. Children born into covenant families are to be included in the covenant promises. Uh, the pattern is the same whether it's the old covenant of the Old Testament or the new covenant in Christ in the New Testament. In both cases, we apply the covenant sign and then we nurture our children in the faith, in the new covenant that um, in the new covenant uh, that is, it's represented in the sacrament of baptism, and then we nurture children in the covenant promises. That is, we nurture them in in faith. That's why we teach that baptism is a sacrament of new beginnings. 
It's a sacrament of initiation. It's a starting line, in other words, not a finish line. It's welcome to the team, and now let's learn to be the team. This is the reality, though. Uh, it's tough work. What kind of work, you say? Well, the work of nurturing our kids in faith in the gospel. Just ask any parent, just ask any children's director or pastor or youth leader or small group leader, but it's the most important work and the most rewarding thing. I think the last 1,500 years or so of Judeo-Christian influence has been remarkable in Western civilization, but tectonic shifts in worldview through relativism, secularism, and pluralism have eroded that foundation and in some ways produced huge cracks or fissures. The cultural climate is less and less supportive of particular Christian belief and practice, and the general knowledge of the biblical story is rapidly fading from our collective conscience. A recent Barna survey revealed that only 17% of churchgoers knew what the Great Commission was, for example. That is, Jesus' command to the disciples to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. It's an era that we live in where it's less about people understanding biblical faith and rejecting it, and more about a generation that increasingly has never really heard the gospel or have any real familiarity with the Bible at all. We've noticed increasingly uh, participants of Alpha will share that they're embarrassed to ask a question because it reveals their lack of knowledge of the scriptures or of the Bible. And we remind them all the time, no, 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 this is why we're doing this together. Your questions are good. Don't be embarrassed. Increasingly, many young people have no idea what the Christmas story is or what the Easter story is about. But instead of lamenting the state of things today. I believe God's call to the church presents the most exciting opportunity to help a new generation discover, trust, and follow Jesus. As you can imagine, even many believing parents struggle to feel equipped to nurture their kids in their faith. The influences and ideological forces that descend on our kids from new media is a relentless flow, as we all know. Helping kids and families discern truth and navigate the road of life in our day is just, you know, not an easy thing. At St. John's, we use a curriculum with our kids and students. Uh, it's called Orange. It's a powerful and creative resource, and it shaped our thinking about the relationship between the family and the church in profound ways. They are really about ways of doing ministry that actually align with Scripture and the story of God. There are a couple things today that we've learned from Orange along the way, principles that will help us as parents, volunteers, and members of the body of Christ as we seek to be faithful to pass the torch of faith to the next generation. And in case you're watching this and feel it's not relevant to you for whatever reason, let me, let me challenge you for a moment. When we baptize a little one in our tradition or a new adult believer for that matter, the entire congregation, the whole church stands and affirms that we'll do everything we can to support and nurture the faith of the newly baptized. As members of the household of faith, it's a responsibility that we all share. Whether you have children or not, whether they're grown adults or not, we all have something to contribute. And here's the mystery. When we give ourselves to help others grow in their faith, it always results in our own growth in the faith. When a parent or grandparent reads a Bible story or prays with a kid or gets involved in the life of a young person, everyone grows. Everyone is blessed. When steadfast families and church families of caring adults come around kids, then an orange life becomes possible. Every kid deserves an orange life. So here are two principles that we've learned along the way from Orange about how to be orange together for the sake of a new generation. The first one is this. Two combined influences are greater than just two influences. The red, a symbol of unconditional love of the family, and the yellow, a symbol for the light of Christ of the church, represent two potential influences in the life of a child. But when those influences are joined together in partnership, powerful things can happen. Red and yellow coming together, that's orange. The church has an average of 45 hours of influence in a kid's life in a given year. But parents have an average of 3,000 hours of influence in their kids' lives in that same year, which means that we increase our influence in a kid's life dramatically when we help parents by giving them the tools, the equipping, resources, and encouragement to be engaged in, in the, the, um, the work of spiritual nurture at home. 
uh, around the dinner table, in the car, at bedtime, along life's way. Through the wisdom of Scripture summarized so well through Orange, we've been working with families and kids at SJC to have this kind of partnership. When the love of a family combines with the light of the local church, a powerful spirit-driven influence becomes possible. But it needs something else. And that leads us to the second principle about being orange. It's summed up in this phrase, love over time. Love over time. In a great little book uh, called Playing for Keeps, co-authored by Orange founder Reggie Joyner and Orange president Kristen Ivey, they unpack six powerful dynamics when placed over time, make a huge impact in the life of a kid. Here they are. It's time over time, and then love over time, words over time, stories over time, tribes over time, and lastly, fun over time. Parents and grandparents, educators, uh, anyone who might be watching this, anyone who works with kids or cares about the rising generation, I really encourage you to go and read this book. Again, Playing for Keeps, it's a great resource. So let's focus on one of these dynamics, love over time. What happens in a kid's life when the church and family combine their influence consistently over time? When churches and families partner together to prove love consistently, we show them the character of Jesus. I love the scene we just read from John 13. Jesus is teaching a final lesson with his disciples whom he had been with every day for three years. That's a lot of hours. That's a lot of influence. In an act of unthinkable humility, though, and servitude, Jesus, the master teacher, takes up the basin and towel and washes the disciples' feet. John says that Jesus was demonstrating love. He writes, When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, close quote. Jesus' entire ministry with his disciples was encapsulated in this final lesson. The foot washing uh, and then becomes the symbolic model for the kind of love that God is revealing and the kind of love that should characterize God's people. At the end of their time in the upper room, Jesus says these words. He says, quote, A new commandment I give you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another, close quote. I think what's most powerful about this, actually, is that Jesus demonstrated even more profoundly when after his death and resurrection, when all the disciples had scattered and left him, and after Peter's denial that he ever even knew Jesus, Jesus seeks them out, invites them in, pronounces his peace over them, blesses them, and then commissions them as his friends and ambassadors. Jesus proved love beyond their mistakes and failures. He showed up and he showed them love over time. One last story. Reggie Joyner describes a powerful example of love over time and what it looks like. Uh, he relates this story. He says, quote, A few years ago, we had the privilege of meeting with education reformer Jeffrey Canada about children who grow up in disadvantaged environments. Canada's an educator, uh, a reformer who grew up in the South Bronx, went to Harvard Graduate School, and came back to Harlem as the president and CEO of the Harlem Children's Zone. He has dedicated um, his life to giving kids a better chance by helping them graduate high school and get into college. In a conversation with Jeffrey, he made an interesting observation about the kids in Harlem. He said, the reason so many of these kids don't believe in God is because they've never seen adults who are God-like. What he was saying was simple. In order to believe in a good and creative God who loves them in spite of their mistakes and their mess, kids and teenagers need adults who will do the same. They need adults who can demonstrate to them over time that they matter and that they have value far greater than, than what can be measured by their uh, performance. They need parents and leaders like you who will be present in their lives in order to know them and never run away so that they will know how much they are worth." Close quote. Just a beautiful, beautiful illustration of love over time, a demonstration of the power of love over time. So church, Let's be more than just two influences, the two influences of red and yellow. 
Let's be the combined influence of orange for the sake of a new generation. As we sit today, there are families in our community who don't know the love of Christ. Sure, they've heard of the church and they've heard of the person of Jesus, but they don't know the story and they've never seen a community of unconditional love over time. Today in our community, there are children, kids, students, and young adults who've never experienced what it's like to be loved over time. Maybe you're a parent struggling to know how to help your own kid and especially knowing how to help your own kids spiritually. Maybe as a parent today, you feel at a loss when it comes to leading and engaging with your kids spiritually. Uh, you're not alone. Every parent uh, on the face of the earth feels like that on some level at some points in their journey. Let's bring together then your heart of love with the light of the church. Let's combine those influences and learn to be orange together. Today is the day to see in orange, to begin to make choices based on the conviction that every kid needs and that every kid deserves an orange life. I read a great quote the other day. It said, we all need community. In order to find it, we need to be it. See, this is your invitation. Many families in our culture make so many different commitments that they leave no margin for community in the body of Christ. And what happens often over time is that the flame of faith eventually dies and goes out. And then a kind of guilt or shame begins to set in uh, that becomes kind of a quiet resignation where people say to themselves, well, we could just sort of do this on our own. Well, let me say to you today that if this is the kind of story your family's in right now, you're not alone and you're loved and it's time for a fresh start to connect again. It's not too late to combine your love with the light of community in the body of Christ. The church and the family are meant for one another. We were meant to be orange together. Even if your kids are teenagers or older young adults, it's never too late. Let's pray together. Father, we stand in awe today at your love and wisdom. We're humbled by your love, your love over time. And we recognize the gap between what we aspire to be in you and where we actually are. Thank you, Lord, that yours is the voice of encouragement uh, and the voice of joy and the voice of an invitation today. And we hold before you our precious kids and we bring you our very own hearts. Renew us in the joy and the possibilities of being orange, of being connected together uh, and committed together with the church. Help us with the fruit of consistency. Remind us the power of showing up with our families, with our kids and with your church. And God, broaden our influence, we pray, so that our community is invited, our neighbors, our coworkers, and their families. And for the kids out there who have never felt love, Lord, who deserve an orange life too, for homes out there and in here that have no hope, we pray, renew, restore, raise up the brokenhearted. Let us be a church community for them, Jesus. And we pray this in your wonderful and powerful name. Amen. I dare not trust the sweetest ring, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the city.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Fall in, stand before the throne. Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The fourth day he rose from the dead. He ascended in the heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. On thence, you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness for sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Hey, I'm Darcy K. Britt, class of 2022. I will be attending Wake Forest University in the fall. Go Deeks! I'm most excited about going to all the sporting events like the football games, the basketball games. And when we win, I'm excited about rolling the quad, which is putting toilet paper all over the quad. <laughs> I'm most nervous about just finding my people. I'm going to try to get involved and do everything I can, but just finding the people I can click with. My favorite food is my dad's steak. So, the steak he makes. Yeah, what, what is special about his steaks? He uses a seasoning. I think it's Dale seasoning. And he cooks it perfectly. You know, the restaurants, they typically yeah. mess that one up. <laughs> I love to play tennis, basketball, any sport. Uh, I love to go to the beach and hang out with friends. And I like to watch Netflix. <laughs> My high school years have flown by. Um, yeah, I can't believe I'm a senior. I feel like I just started freshman year. It's crazy how it seems like you have a lot of time, but you really don't. So God has definitely taught me to trust in Him and in His wisdom. Um, I found myself being focused on worldly things and focused on getting what I want. And I don't get what I want, and I'm like kind of you know angry about it. But then by time comes and then I see what happens and I'm like oh that actually turned out for the best and then it's just a reminder oh I need to trust in God's wisdom and trust in God because he is smarter than me and he knows what's best for me. Probably my favorite moment was the senior night of my basketball game. Um, I've worked so hard in basketball throughout my years and seeing my um, parents <laughs> this is gonna happen. <laughs> They've been my biggest supporters, my biggest fans. Um, my dad's more on the quiet side, so he's quietly been there for me. Um, but my mom has loudly been there for me. Um, and um, she also pushes me to go out of my comfort zone and um, be the best person I can be. And. Um, yeah, they've been super supportive. At the beginning of my senior year, I read Matthew 4.4. 4. Um, it basically says to not live on bread alone, but to live on the Word of God. And that has just been a reminder through my life to not, which I kind of said earlier, not be stuck in the worldly things, 
or the material things, but to live on, live by the word of God. And it's also a reminder of to who I am. You know, I'm a child of God and what I'm supposed to do in this world. I'm supposed to love one another um, and I'm called to reach out to one another and not be selfish. And so I always just love that verse because it's a reminder of who I am in, in this world and my purpose entirely. Um, it's not just focused on one thing, but it's really keeping me on track to who I am and what I need to do. St. John's family means a lot to me. Um, I have grown up here, I was baptized here, I've come, this has been my church forever, so everyone here is so welcoming and nice, and I love coming on Sundays and catching up with everyone. Um, they've all been supportive of me as I've grown up, and it's just been, it's just been a blessing to have a church like this, and I'm really excited to see all these new kids um, running around and to see them grow up in a church like I did. I'm Darcy K. Britt, thank you, and I'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> well, hey friends, thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today from wherever you might be connecting, whenever you may be connecting with this. We're delighted that you're with us. It's such an honor, and our prayer for you is simple, the love of Christ over your life. We pray that you're experiencing him today and we want to invite you to stay connected with us just go to our website click the event hub to discover ways that you can connect and grow in your walk with christ we would love to meet you there and if you're in the wilmington area we want you to take a next step and join us consider joining us for an in-person worship gathering sundays at 8 30 and 10 a.m we thank you so much for your partnership with us uh, so many people connected to our church family just give themselves uh, um, over in so many different ways to make the mission and vision uh, here at SJC happen. Uh, stewardship is just a part of the joy of being a follower of Jesus, uh, learning to give ourselves to him each and every day in every kind of way. You can continue to give financially to the vision and mission here at SJC by simply mailing in a check to the address at the bottom of the screen. You can go online for online giving for a safe and secure donation. Just hit the giving button at our website or you can give by text. Simply enter the numbers at the bottom of the screen and follow the prompts along for a safe and secure donation. Any and every gift, large or small, adds up to make a big difference in the lives of others for the sake of his name. So we really, really thank you for that. Your gifts are needed in this season and they're deeply appreciated. We look forward to seeing you guys somewhere down the line and may the Lord continue to build in each of us, his people in the body of Christ, generous hearts. Our Father in heaven has been so generous and kind to us. May we respond to the riches of his grace with our gratitude and our generosity and giving. God bless you today in your giving. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, I just love that concept that two combined influences 
are better than just two separate influences. The power of red and yellow, the love of the home, the light of Christ in the church coming together to make orange is what it's all about. It's scriptural. It's the pattern that God has showed us over and over and over again. It's what every kid needs. And I would say, and I hope you agree, that every kid deserves to have an orange life. That's what we're working on here at SJC. I know that's what we're all working on in this world. So thank you so much for being a part of our worship time today. Stay connected with us moving forward. You can find us anywhere and everywhere at SJCILM. Hope you'll do that. And remember, as you go today, Jesus loves you. He really, really does. And friends, life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you soon. Take care.